As we have seen in the previous video, there are cases where we want to conclude about the convergence of a given series by comparison with a series for which we know uh, whether the, it is convergent or divergent, but where direct comparison doesn't work because we don't get the inequality in the direction we would like. This is when we will use an alternative to direct comparison, which is the limit comparison test, and we're going to turn directly to the statement of the result, which is that if we, if we are looking at two series with uh, non-negative terms, just like for direct comparison, and we look at the limit of the quotient of the general terms. And so we have on one end series of an, on the other end series of bn. These are series with positive terms. We look at the terms of corresponding index, an over bn. We take the quotient and we look at the limit when n goes to infinity. Of course, for the series, series of an or series of bn uh, to, to be possibly convergent, uh, we need limit of an and limit of bn to be zero. Uh, so you can think of this as a case where an and bn are sequences, the sequences of terms for the two series, that are going to zero. And when you're looking at the quotient, you're comparing at what rate they are going to zero. If the limit of the quotient is a non-zero finite constant, what that means is that essentially an and bn go to zero essentially at the same rate. And then the conclusion is that both series behave the same way. In other words, they both converge or both diverge. Okay, so let's uh, prove this fact. It's in fact uh, a simple variant of the direct comparison argument because um, if C is a non-zero positive constant, then we can find M and capital M that are a lower bound and upper bound for C. So C is in the open interval from little m to capital M. And if the limit of the quotient an over bn is C, then for um, indices large enough, we can make the quotient an over bn in that interval from little m to capital M. Multiplying both sides by bn, that means that for indices large enough, an is between a constant multiple of bn and another constant multiple of bn. And that's going to be enough for us to argue by comparison, because now, if the series of bn is convergent, then in particular the series when we start at capital N is also convergent. We just removed finitely many terms. And so when I multiply by a constant, I get again a convergent series. But a convergent series uh, whose general term is uh, larger than the general term for the series of an, at least started at capital N. So we conclude that the series from n equal capital N to infinity of the an is convergent by comparison. Uh, but then, of course, if we add finitely many terms, it's still going to be convergent. So the series of an starting at 1 is also convergent. On the other hand, if the series of bn is divergent, so is the series starting at capital N, because we just remove finitely many terms, so we don't change convergence. And so when we mul multiply by a non-zero constant, the general term bn, we obtain again a divergent series, whose general term is smaller than an, and therefore the series with a larger term than a, a divergent series is also divergent. So series of an is divergent by comparison, if we start at capital N, but of course, therefore, it is divergent as well if we start at 1. So that means that uh, if the series of Bn is convergent, so is the series of An, and if the series of Bn is divergent, so is the series of An. So the way we're going to use that is uh, we have a certain series, let's say the series of An, and we're going to have to pick Bn in such a way that we can decide easily whether a series of bn is convergent or not, and we can calculate the limit of the quotient an over bn and expect a non-zero finite number for the limit. So the example that motivated us to look at this limit comparison test was this one, the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, where 
uh, clearly when n is large, the bottom 2 to the n minus 1 should behave, should not really be affected much by this negative 1, but should really behave like 2 to the n. So we expect this series to behave the same way as a series of 1 over 2 to the n. However, the problem is that one over two, the series of 1 over 2 to the n is convergent, so we would like, if we were to use direct comparison, we would like to show that this is uh, less than 1 over 2 to the n, but it's not. It is actually greater than 1 over 2 to the n. But if I take for a n the general term of my series, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, and for b n, the series I want to compare it with, so the general term 1 over 2 to the n of the series I want to compare it with. Um, these are two series with positive terms, a n and b n are two positive sequences. And if I look at the limit of the quotient, it's a limit of 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1, factoring 2 to the n at the top and the bottom and cancelling, uh, we get the limit of 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, 1 over 2 to the n goes to 0, and therefore the limit of the quotient is 1, which is some constant uh, that is non, some non-zero positive constant. So we are in the case uh, where the limit comparison tests apply, and the conclusion is that series of an and series of bn have the same behavior, but we know what is the behavior of the series of bn, series of 1 over 2 to the n, is a geometric series of common ratio 1 half, and therefore it's convergent. And so by limit comparison, we can conclude that the series we are looking at is also convergent. Now we are going to look at these uh, four additional examples, starting with a series from 1 to infinity of 2n squared plus 3n divided by the root of 5 plus n to the fifth. So we are going to set for a n, the general term of my series, 2n squared plus 3n divided by root of 5 plus n to the fifth, and we're trying to see what we want to compare that with. Um, yeah, the top 2n squared plus 3n for n large should behave like 2n squared, essentially. And the top here is greater than 2n squared. But on the other end, um, at the bottom, we have 1 over root of 5 plus n to the fifth, which should behave for n large like 1 over root of n to the fifth. But the problem is uh, here we have the inequality in the opposite direction because I'm dividing by something greater than root of n to the fifth and therefore I get something smaller than uh, 1 over root of n to the fifth. So we have the uh, reverse direction when we compare top and bottom. But one way to go about it is really to think that the top is going to behave like 2n square and the bottom like square root of n to the fifth and forget about the order, but use limit comparison. So in that case, we're going to choose for bn um, 2n squared divided by square root of n to the fifth. So 2 here is really inessential. I, I, I could pick any constant, it really doesn't matter. So um, root of n to the fifth is really n to the 5 half and uh, I have n squared at the top, so I get n to the 5 half minus 2 at the bottom, which is really n to the 5 half minus 4 half, n to the 1 half. So one way to write my bn is 2 divided by n to the 1 half. And now if we picked bn correctly, we should expect that the limit of an over bn is 1, because we uh, really looked at what should be the behavior of the top and the bottom. But we have to uh, write that out explicitly, the limit at infinity of an over bn. It's a limit of my term an multiplied by the reciprocal of bn, which is root of n to the fifth divided by 2n squared. And then I'm going to just uh, factor out the leading terms at the top and the bottom in uh, the first fraction. Specifically, I'm going to factor out n squared at the top and n to the fifth under the root. And then we can, fact, we can cancel out the n square um, with the uh, n square that is at the bottom in the second fraction and the root of n to the fifth uh, with the root of n to the fifth that is at the top in the second fraction. And what we obtain is simply the limit at infinity of 2 plus 3 over n divided by root of 1 plus 5 over n to the fifth. And then we have a constant 1 half that uh, comes from the fact that we kept this 2 in the expression for bn. We could remove that, 
Regardless, here the limit of this expression when n goes to infinity is 1, which is a non-zero positive constant. Therefore, according to the limit comparison test, the series of an and series of bn are going to behave the same in terms of convergence. But we can easily decide for the series of bn, it is a divergent p-series, because it's p-series for p equal 1 half, which is less than or equal to 1. And so by limit comparison, uh, the series I'm looking at is also divergent. Let's look at the second example, uh, namely the series from 1 to infinity of 1 plus n plus n squared divided by 1 plus n squared plus n to the 6. So I'm going to pick this expression for a n, and again, uh, for direct comparison, it is a little bit cumbersome because the top is greater than n squared, and the bottom is greater than n to the 6, which means that the reciprocal is smaller than the reciprocal of n to the 6. But we can focus on the uh, asymptotic behavior. Uh, in other words, when n is large, the top should behave like n squared, the bottom like n to the 6. So we're going to focus on that and pick for bn, n squared divided by n to the 6, in other words, 1 over n to the 4th. And then we look at the limit of the quotient n over bn, which we should expect to be 1 in this particular case, but we can write that out explicitly. So I have the expression for an that I multiply by the reciprocal of the expression for bn. I'm going to do the same thing I did in the previous example, which is factor out uh, the highest power of n at the top and at the bottom in the expression for a n. And so I get uh, n squared divided by n to the 6, that's 1 over n to the 4th, that is going to cancel out with the n to the 4th that we have afterwards. And so we obtain simply the limit of um, 1 over n squared plus 1 over n plus 1, which is 1 divided by, well, which goes to 1, divided by 1 over n to the 6 plus 1 over n to the 4th plus 1, which also goes to 1, so the limit is 1. In other words, a non-zero positive constant, which means that um, by the limit comparison test, we can conclude that the series of an and the series of bn have the same behavior in terms of convergence. And this is good enough because we can easily decide whether the series of bn is convergent because this is a convergent p-series, it's a p-series for p equal 4, which is greater than 1. So by limit comparison, we can conclude that our series is convergent as well. Turning to the series from 1 to infinity of sine of 1 over n, I, we're going to pick again a n is the generic term of my series, so sine of 1 over n, and here it might appear to be a little harder to see what we should compare that with. And the first thing you should look at is whether the general term goes to zero. If n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to zero, and therefore sine of 1 over n goes to sine zero, which is zero. And we, um, we have a, a series with positive terms, because uh, when n grows, we get close to zero, and um, 1 over n is positive, so close to zero with positive angles, the sine is going to be positive and going to zero. Um, so we are in the setting to use limit comparison. The spirit of the limit comparison test is to pick a sequence bn that goes to zero essentially at the same rate as an. So here what you should ask yourself is, okay, I'm looking at a sign of something that goes to zero and so the angle goes to zero, so the sine goes to zero, and I want to know at what rate uh, sine of that angle goes to zero. Well, you have seen, uh, at least in Calc 1, um, an expression that uh, formalizes precisely this, uh, at what rate does sine x go to zero when x goes to zero, and uh, specifically it goes to zero at the same rate as x. You can verify this using, for instance, the rule of de l'Hôpital. But when you calculated the derivative of sine and cosine, um, you started by establishing this limit in calculus 1. So we know that the limit at 0 of sine x over x is 1, and that means that um, sine goes to 0 at 0 at the same rate as the angle. 
Therefore, we should take for Bn 1 over n because this is the angle. And now the limit of the quotient n over Bn is really the limit at infinity of sine of 1 over n divided by 1 over n, which of course is the same as the limit at 0 of sine x over x, in other words, 1. So, according to the limit comparison test, the behavior of the series of An is the same as the behavior of the series of Bn, but we know what that is because series of 1 over n is a divergent p-series, and therefore by the limit comparison test our series is divergent as well. To conclude, we're going to look at a series where it's maybe a little bit uh, trickier to figure out what we should compare that with. Uh, it's a series clearly of positive terms, uh, and the positive terms is 1 over n to the 1 over n plus 1. So I'm going to take that for an, and of course, when the exponent is 1 over n plus 1, I can write that as n to the 1 multiplied by n to the 1 over n. And uh, of course, when n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, but I would like to know at what rate. Uh, in other words, what uh, in order to, to find bn that I should compare a n with. And to do that, we need to know at what rate n to the 1 over n uh, what is the behavior of n to the 1 over n when n goes to infinity. And uh, this can be written as e to the 1 over n ln of n, and to figure out what is the behavior of this when n grows large, uh, we can look at the limit when n goes to infinity of ln of n over n, and we can write that as a limit at infinity of ln of x over x, which we can calculate using the rule of de l'hôpital, because it's an indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity. So the limit is the same as the limit of the quotient of derivatives. The derivative of the top is 1 over x, of the bottom is 1. So we get the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, and that is 0. That means ln of n over n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, and therefore n to the power 1 over n is e to the sum expression that goes to 0, and therefore its limit is e to the 0, which is 1. That means that in our expression for our term a n, this part n to the 1 over n is approaching 1 as n goes to infinity, which suggests that 1 over n uh, should be what we take to compare a n with. So let's do just that, take b n is 1 over n, and look at the limit of a n over b n. What it is, uh, an, which is 1 over n to the 1 over n plus 1, multiplied by the reciprocal of bn, so just by n. Cancelling the uh, n out, we get the limit of 1 over n to the 1 over n. But n to the 1 over n, we just have seen that as n goes to infinity, this goes to 1, and therefore the reciprocal goes to 1 as well. And so we obtain 1 for the limit of the quotient of an over bn. an and bn are series with positive terms, so according to the limit comparison test, both series, series of an and series of bn, have the same behavior in terms of convergence, and we know what is the behavior of the series of bn. It's a series of 1 over n, it's a divergent p-series, and therefore by limit comparison we can conclude that our series, series of 1 over n to the 1 over n plus 1, is also divergent. Now you should turn to the next video where we will uh, revisit the problem of estimate, estimating sums when we have a convergent series.